Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus 63 HP podcast. I am one of your hosts, John Clemente. Alongside with me are two of my bestest best friends. I'm starting with the guy with the pink headset, Trebox. How are you doing? Tired. It was so hot today, but uh, yeah, I'm still alive. We are still all alive. still alive. Uh, along with us is another one of our bestest best friends waking up or staying up at an ungodly hour in the West Coast is Arnie. How are you doing, Arnie? Hello there. I'm doing great. Doing great. Awesome. And if this is your first time watching us, thank you very much for the view. We really, really appreciate it. We urge you to get your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriends, your mom and dad's phones and laptops. Go to the browser and type in youtube.com slash plus six three HP and then hit the like and subscribe button. It helps us continue to make content to our growing number of people with like-minded, oh, growing number of like-minded individuals that likes good content. Um, if you do not want to see our faces, you can listen to us on any of the popular podcasting apps, including Apple, Spotify, and Amazon. Just search plus six three HP. If you want to interact with us as well and know when our uh, videos are dropping, uh, go to your favorite social media app, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we are also there with the handle at plus six three HP. Mondays and Tuesdays, we will be uh, dropping uh, analysis and reviews, deep dives for popular movies and series that are in the zeitgeist. This week, we are discussing The Mandalorian. In a few weeks, we will be discussing the first quarter of the Ted Lasso Season 3. Uh, on Wednesdays, we have our D&D campaign, our very, very first D&D campaign, where a bunch of middle-aged old guys uh, try their first campaign, recorded for posterity and share it to the world we're having a great time uh the first campaign is over a year and a half now so it's extremely extremely fun uh on thursdays we have a curated list of featurettes short videos trailers of upcoming content and you can see us react to them and see whether we are hyped for them or not and on fridays Chabox and our other best best friend rj cannot get enough of dnd so they spun off their own uh, uh campaign where they are bad guys so that usually drops during friday so Almost every day of the week, we'll have new content. Hopefully, you'll join us uh, and help this channel grow. With that, this week, we are discussing the latest episode of The Mandalorian, Episode 3. Uh, before we deep dive into the actual plot and synopsis and things that we like and don't like about that particular episode, uh, I'll start with Arnie because he'll be doing the synopsis later. What do you what did you think about episode three the 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 episode where Carl Weathers directed? Episode no spoilers. Four. Episode, oh, four. episode four. Sorry. Episode four. Uh, I was like, shit, did I miss something? Okay. Sorry, yeah. Episode four. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Well, I mean, Carl Weathers is pretty much uh, becoming an, an action director. Basically, there's a lot of action in this episode. So, and it looks like it's something what the fans want so they're happy about it for the most part so yeah it was it was really good Shabak, what do you think about episode four? Oh, i'm loving it it's just short but i mean i yeah i've been i was i'm part of a group of like the mandalorian of a facebook group and a lots of fucking bitches whining Yep. I, I I I unfollowed. I just I, I'm having I'm lo I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I mean, it yeah. was short, thirty minutes, but you know, I mean, yeah, they're like it's too short, and then, oh, it's one hour, but it's there's a lot of boring stuff. Like, come on, mm. people. Make but up that your episode mind. was like, I I don't know how you can extend it. It was it is I don't know. It gave it everything. Everything was there, so I I, I yeah. liked it. There's, I just, there's no fat. I I'm part of. It's time for him to speak. Go, go, speak. Go, go, speak. <laughs> but he needs to speak the oath then, so we won't be able to yeah. uh, train. But for me, it's like, I actually, you know, I, I've read the reviews. People are saying like, hey, we are halfway through the season and there's nothing happening, which is, for me, half what? of me is like, all right, I understand. It's only eight episodes, so... Mm -hmm. Right, so it's it's half of the season. Nothing real, re really, real is happening. We we are now back to being a Mandalorian. Great, I understand that. But in the end, it's we have action every episode. It's more of like it, it be, mm -hmm. you know, it became monster of the week kind of thing. So it's mm -hmm. been fun. Uh, 
the only thing that I would comment about, so I like the episode because of the action, but I also didn't like the episode because of the action. So that's kind of like my non-spoilery review before we d- d- dive into, um, uh, you know, uh, into the actual episode. Uh, overall, it was fine. Like, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Like, Chewbacca, right. Like, I, I understand the general reviews of this particular season because there's no big, big arc that seems to be coming out. But every episode, there's a, a good chunk, like a, a good mm-hmm. event. It happens, and I'm satisfied with that. They're not scripting on the action. Almost I, every episode has a big action piece. Yeah. So keep going. And and I love that you know we, we see a lot of Mandalorians in action, which is mm-hmm. you know it's great. I'm enjoying it. Uh, so with that I'll throw it out to Arnie. Give us a synopsis, and we can discuss um uh, are the things that we like and didn't like about uh Mandalorian episode four. All right, so the episode starts with in the Mandalorian covert where they're just doing some training exercises or some mm-hmm. uh, some podcasts even called like Cobra Kai training exercises or something like that. So we actually see how they train and um, and the focus went into Man, if there was a, like a, a current a current uh, firearms master, he'd be pissed. <laughs> There were there was just like no organization. Everybody was shooting there's, everywhere. There's like, no time. I think they were ex- they were expecting that. Now these are all experts, so yeah, that, shoot that is, right beside each no, other. And it, it's yeah. it's totally like, uh, and I can also appreciate that it's like this is not like uh, your your uncle's shooting range. These are these are their lives. So you know. If you fuck up, yeah. then you know that's a big lesson to had. So if you yeah. if you if you weren't disciplined with your trigger finger and somebody got hurt, then that's that's a big deal on you. So I I could see yeah. them doing that. Yeah, and the thing is, like uh, in in the world of mythosaurs and the force, the only thing is unrealistic for you is the way they handle their weapons. That's a problem for you. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so they're training, and then of course they're focusing on Bo-Katan, who's watching, or basically overseeing, trying to see uh, this new cult that she joined. And then we see Grogu. Uh, at first, we thought he was just force pushing some rocks, but it turns out it was the crabs mm-hmm. that look like the crabs from uh, Rebels. And then uh, it Dinjarin. could also be like. Uh... Either yeah, he's attract- just full of life or he's attracting yeah. them by the force. Right? He's attracting oh. them. Yeah. He's attracting them. I mean, they're not attacking him. He's about to eat one. And then, then John <laughs> says, well, time to start training, buddy. So so he was uh, paired up with Ragnar, uh, which we find out later that it is Pas Vizsla's son. And of course, Ragnar was like, why doesn't he have a helmet? And the reason why is he couldn't, he's not old enough to speak the creed. And I do so, like the scene because... Being Mandalorians, you can under you can feel that he had he was like he had contempt for Grogu and a mm-hmm. little bullying. But being yeah. a Mandalorian, it was still it was still like uh, controlled. It, he wasn't like yeah. uh, this is a, you know, why am I doing this? Why is he not like a whiny yeah. whiny? Yeah, then yeah, American, then he's uh, too you know yeah yeah. Then he's too young to fight, and then uh, then Jaren's like, well, you you do not speak what you do not know. And and, she, mm-hmm. and he's like, well, I know. He's like, well, I guess this lesson is for you then. And yeah, and that was actually cool. And and of course, you know, the first two tries, they they pick the training darts or paintball, and Grogu with the paintball uh, wristband is actually wow. That's really so cute. But uh, yeah, first two first two rounds, uh, Ragnar was leading. Until uh, Din Djarin said, hey, hey, it's okay if you want to show your Jedi powers. It's okay. I've seen what you could do. And he did. And he beat Ragnar fair and square. So, uh, and then sorry, Ragnar. Sorry, just yeah. to, to, to rant again. Because I, I saw this post in Facebook. So like, why is the rules like, uh, they didn't, didn't follow the rules. He, he They stopped it after each point. But when Grogu did it, he was listening. Like, fucking listen to this. Well... The instructions said okay. you can shoot one or three, up to you. You, you could yeah. shoot any sequence, but Ragnar being, oh, this yeah, is like, like a, taking it easy, shooting one by one. So oh my God, people that are so nitpicky. But 
Star Wars fans are the Star Wars Star Trek any fandom uh, any fandom I yeah. mean I think it's one of they're, those they're things extra that... worse trust me yeah. yeah but yeah but Star Wars is very extra I mean we'll we'll talk more about that with a particular character later on but uh but yeah I mean uh, the Grogu showed that yeah even though I'm small I did the Yoda flip and yeah and I, I and I beat somebody and Ragnar of course he wasn't whiny he didn't protest uh, he he just walked away and then that's where the uh, it's called a raptor dragon or whatever it is grabbed him so at first Din Djarin wanted to shoot the uh, the lizard bird and then Paz like nope you might hit the kid so let's just chase him with the jetpack and then I think there's like four Mandos who followed and then each one of them lost uh, ran out of fuel which I, is I, a good I like, you know I like that I like that I like that because at first I thought like whoa the defective jetpacks but it does seem like that they run out of it, it's a tiny it's not a tiny pack it's it's feasible yeah. that it runs out real quick right yeah but the thing is it's the first time at least in my point of view it's been referenced that they actually run out of fuel uh because uh the only reference before is like uh, whistling birds is very limited or you know these weapons you run out of bullets or something like that right so at least there's part of uh, there's some realism there and then of course they're like, oh, he's getting away again. And the kid's gonna be killed. And then we see uh, Bo-Katan's gauntlet follow. And then we get this classic Top Gun uh, 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 homage, I guess. So they go back to the cave. Bo-Katan said, oh yeah, I followed it to its lair. We could come back, and uh, you know we could rescue the foundling. And of course. Uh, she was voluntold to lead the pack, and they brought in this uh, the Shriek Hawk uh, crew, which apparently is uh, as a, a real section of Death Watch. So uh, it basically, Bo-Katan's back to Death Watch again. Uh, so they uh, they went as close as possible, and then they camped, and that's where like when they were like uh, about to eat. Bo-Katan's like, well, how do you eat in front of people? And then uh, I love that part. I love that like, part. Well, you don't. You walk away. You find a spot that you're alone. Then you eat. And then, being the leader of the war pack, uh, Paz Vizla said to Bo-Katan, "Well, you know, you have the honor to stay in the fire because this is the way." And you know, it's also nice to see uh, Katie Sackhoff's face at least. <laughs> so real quick, but uh... real quick, but but it's it's like uh, you know, there's like. Even though she's a newbie to the group, but because she's leading, you know, she's being treated as a normal, ordinary Mandalorian. So that's good. And then I, I so sorry to interrupt, but the mm -hmm. idea of, of the last episode was the convert, right? And mm -hmm. I really it really felt the the effects now because the convert wasn't just Pershing, but also uh Bo. Bo. And then now she's seeing the benefits of being in because like he, she realized that you know there's certain sects of of Mandalore that are a little too fan fanatics like this, like you don't take off mm -hmm. your, yeah, yeah. but there are also benefits of it. Like you're welcome. You're welcome. Doesn't matter yeah. what your, your previous history is. You yeah. took a bath in some water with some monsters. And then now you're, uh, now you're part of the pack and then you, we follow whatever it means. So it's like, that was great for me. It's like, Oh, yeah. plus we get, we get more practical answers to questions that we have whenever we're watching Mandalore. Like, How do you eat? How yeah. do you shower, right? As I was yeah, and, and then there's uh, in the Facebook group, there's like, well, how do they have sex? And they're like, um, keep the helmet on. Keep the helmet, I'm kinky. <laughs> <laughs> and then I made a comment, well, you just have sex in the living waters after that, bathe, and then you're back. <laughs> but I yeah, but that's a, a good way to run it out. But, but anyways, um, but it's also it also shows how out of resources they are. They don't even have like other ships. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It it does seem like they just either landed there on a on a, on, a, on an Uber, <laughs> so so they don't have their own ship. So it's just Bo's ship basically right now. And, and Dins Dins ships is also still there, but he can't really take passengers. So they tried. The, the, there's a whole climbing montage. Uh, and I I feel bad for Paz that he still has to carry his heavy Gatling gun, but hey, you know that, that's that's the thing. You 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 pick to be a heavy infantry, you, you stay a heavy infantry. And then when we, when they reach the nest, uh, you know you could still see. I mean, uh, some people say, well, how 
how did past just screw it up? Like, well, it's his son. He's very emotional. It's not. There's no rationale. There's no tactics. He just run it because there's some empty helmets in that nest. <laughs> so that means they've they've killed some foundlings or uh, fellow mandos. And then of course the nest had three three uh, uh, younglings, chicks. Uh, lizard lizard chicks, lizard birds. So at first uh, it was attacking Paz, and then Mama Mama Bird came back, grabbed Paz. Uh, well, first it was re re he just uh, regurgitated Ragnar, and he's still alive. So now the the bird just captured basically both of Islas and flew away, and then the Mandos followed. So at least before they ran out of fuel, they were able to get some uh, you know, the the metal ropes that they have. And tried to free both uh, Mandos. Bo was able to get to the face and stab it with the eye, but this after losing one of her armors, the, the pauldron. And then Mando was able to wrestle the claw to open up so that Ragnar fell off. And he was he did uh, an amazing rocketeer move like the uh, dive bomb, and uh, he was able to cat uh, to catch Ragnar. So basically, uh, saving Paz's kid, and so Paz is more like you know, thankful for Mando, and I just and then of course the slogan the bird, is just so yeah. perfect. You know, it, there's it, yeah, it's it was, all you need to say. Yeah, it's all it's all you need to say. Yeah. Thank you. This yeah. is the way. This and then the you way? can even repeat yeah. it back. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, if I'm I mean, gonna join the cult, that has to be the slogan. <laughs> like, <laughs> Shit. Yeah, yeah, and, and of course the the bird falls to the to the lake or to the water, and you know there's a reference to the or there's always a bigger fish. Yeah, I there's knew always there was gonna be a bigger, apex. A bigger fish. There. Yeah, yeah, there's always a bigger apex predator. So I think that's the apex predator of that planet. That I, I also like that. Uh, I also like the part that he once the big the pre the predator fell to the water, he had mm. a hard time going back up, especially yeah. with the. Uh, uh, they were shooting him like yeah. wires, right, like, or something. Just, yeah. The wires, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, he's kind of like partially blinded too, because Bo Katan stabbed him in the in the eye or something like that. So. Yeah, if, if if there's only one nitpick is we didn't see uh, Paz Paz uh, shoot that gun. The big gun. Yeah. Mm, like, the, 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 uh, well, he's he climb with. Be, uh, but then again, it makes sense because he could shoot. He could shoot the the kid. Yeah. So so, so there's that. Oh yeah, and then they come back to the covert. Oh, well, meanwhile, when all of this action was happening, Grogu was with the armor, and we get the season Flash. one flashback uh, scene. We get go back to Order sixty six again, so we see a, a few Jedi uh, dying to protect uh, Grogu, and then he he was led to an elevator, and then Kaloran Beck was able to meet him and save him from the clones who was played by Ahmed Best uh, mostly known from uh, The Phantom Menace and the prequels playing, playing Jar 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 Binks um, he got an awesome sequence I mean some people still nitpick well he should have gotten a proper Jedi lightsaber like, no he was still cool come on I, so this is where the episode falls apart for me because really yeah, okay. this was horrible chor uh, uh, choreography all over. I am. Um, I would agree with the choreography, but for me, it's like the more. I think they wanted more of the whole color. I mean, it's just. Yeah, the, best. I I yeah. love the I love the fan service. I love yeah. the idea that you know, um, for all the shit that um Jar Jar Binks has received, yeah, these past decades. The past few years, he's been like, you know, he's in a ride, right? Like mm -hmm. he he plays Keller Beck in a ride somewhere. Um, no, I know he he played like the game show host. Like there's like this YouTube uh, yeah, Jedi goes, Temple, yeah. so, whatever. That, that's great. So I like that he's getting his comeuppance, but yeah. nothing against him, nothing against the character. I love that. I love the character. Swordplay looks shit. Running <laughs> looks shit. My biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve in Star Wars action sequence is yeah. they have a lot of sequences where they're flying through the air without cover, right? Mm -hmm. Even their fucking capes don't move. The fuck uh, is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I hate that every time. Like in in Phantom Menace, uh, no, not in Phantom Menace, in uh, Clone War, uh, Return of what's the second one? Clone Wars. Attack of the Clones. Attack Clone Wars. Attack of the, Attack of the Clones. Clones. Yeah. Attack of the Clones too. There was amazing fight scenes with with Anakin and Obi Wan jumping through like mm-hmm. the speeders and shit like that. Hair doesn't move or it mm-hmm. moves lit like like that. And then the cape moves a little bit like that. Drive your car, pull the window down. Let's see how much the exact mm. uh, the air moves your face. That's like my every time that I see it, it's like fuck. I just wish they had an enclosed speeder to make it a little bit more realistic. Because all in all, it was like a, a fun chase scene, and then yeah. you can see how it was, you know, you know, like culminating. It's like where are the others? It's like yeah, there are, there are no others. Yeah, oh, oh, it was good, but I just like. Every time I do a, a chase scene with ships in Star Wars with no cover, it, I, it mm-hmm. just pops in my head and just like yeah. ruins it for me. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the, the, you already mentioned that the, the group that met Kelleran was from Naboo. So there's also the debate now whether it was Padme who sent that uh, ship or it was Jar Jar. So I'm thinking it's Jar Jar who did it. So, you know, in the end, it was Jar Jar all along who saved uh, Grogu uh, to yeah, begin maybe. with. Maybe. I start. So, so yeah, so yeah, so and then of course the flashback ends. We get the new piece of armor for Grogu. It's like this circular, or uh, was it a rondel? So, so, oh, so what is that? It's just like it's a, a circle in his chest. I, 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 or right can now, he wear it like in his arm? No, I think right it's now, uh, Right now it's a chest plate. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, just... like a little yeah. symbol in the chest when he goes. Yeah, it's um in a circular piece of according to Google, a rondel arm. A rondel is a circular piece of metal used for protection as part of a harness of a plate armor, or attached to the helmet, breastplate, counter, or on a gauntlet. So it's like oh, okay. that circular thing, but you can put it in anywhere. Okay. okay. All right. So it's so like... yeah, so he'll grow into it. So he at least for now it's a chest plate, and then eventually if he gets bigger, it could become like a. Maybe a pauldron or something like that. They could always modify it. Yeah. Okay. A little more. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, so so that's the Grogu part, and then going back to the uh, the, the hunting party, they come back. Ragnar was safe, and they even took the chicks as part of the foundlings, which is true to Mandalorian creed. And of course, uh, Armor is like I told Bo Katan, you, you, you honored your family and did the best thing that a Mandalorian could do and save a foundling. So the Armor repaired her pauldron, and that's when she asked for a Mythosaur sigil. And they, and then of course, I, I was actually surprised that she talked to the Armor about this instead I, of the I like Jaren. It that it's out already. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, at least they didn't make it linger. It was just more like, okay, you told the armor. Okay. Uh, what do you feel, Arnie? Are they gearing up for a bow versus Mando? Parang di naman, no? I don't think so. I don't think, I so, think right? she, because I think she respects him, and mm. because of him, he she found the creed again. But also, yeah, she knows that Mando doesn't want to want rule. It, uh... Yeah. It, it's right. basically that's why it's very very uh like i think that's the reason why they're so close because mando and both wants in terms of their careers are so different yeah, yeah it's basically I, I mean she's also falling i uh, not falling i mean she's also close to grogu so like yeah that's another yeah and, and, and she knows she's going to have a problem with grogu cuz you know that's a, she's a he, he's a jedi <laughs> Basically, he's a Jedi Mando, and I think it's it's almost like it's been mentioned in other podcasts. It's like the Jon Snow Daenerys problem, right? Like Jon Snow doesn't want to lead, and even told Daenerys everything, and Daenerys was like, she's the one who just fucked it up by not, you know, doing the right thing. It just he should have just married him or something like that, right? But with this one, I mean, for people who don't want them to fall in love together, which that's fine, they could still be partners as Mandalore. Because obviously it's Bo Katan who could wield the dark saber, right? My daughter's like such a millennial, like, oh, I ship them, I ship them. <laughs> I mean, my it's, wife is it's like, possible. What ship? <laughs> I said, babe, you're too, you're so behind. It's a racer crest cruise ship, but 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 for me, I mean, there's a there's a pathway that they 
they can uh, that they could be married off or they could be just partners. But what what's the the age? Because I know that uh, Bokatan should be like really old, like fifties. I, well, I don't, know what she I don't think be. they 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 they. So I'm assuming have in, ages. I'm assuming no, in Clone but Wars. It shows but... in Clone Wars, cause eh, so oh. the age. So that there's like... in Clone Wars, I think Bo is a teenager or. Maybe late teens. I Google it. And then uh, Rebels, she is like in her twenties. And then the whole trilogy was like nineteen years, nineteen twenty years. See here, dialogue so in she... Star Wars. There was a small age gap between Satine and her sister Bokatan. This would place Bokatan in her late fifties or early sixties by Mando season three. Oh yeah, damn, she looks good at sixty, man. <laughs> she is a Mandalorian. Well. Okay, well, Din Djarin was saved during Separatist time, right? So you, you could assume it's also during the Clone Wars. So he's probably, I mean, if we go with uh, Joel, he's probably six, 56, 60. Let me see. Same thing. Also, how old is Din Djarin? And the thing is, Grogu is just like a he, five years younger he, than them. <laughs> he should be around thirty nine to forty now during the Mandalorian. Oh, okay. Well, hey, Mandalorians, am I right? <laughs> yeah, good, good I know. mean, th that's why for me, like, I mean, yes, they could go with the romantic angle, but uh, for me, I, I, I rather have like a partnership uh, angle, so that you know she could still be independent and. Din Djarin could still be Din Djarin without being, uh, you know, because he he's already a softy with Grogu. So, you know, I mean, it, I would ship them too. I yeah, could, I mean, I mean, I would love to see like the the end of season four, just them getting married. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or, you know, or, you know, keeping the helmets on. Keeping we the think, helmets on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, so basically, uh, so I, I do see uh, that's basically the episode ends. We, they talked about the mythosaur. Uh, the armor basically said, "Well, this this is the way. If you saw it, you saw it. Like, I can't I, see you, you. Do not speak what you do not know. So I don't know if you're lying or not. But if you said you did, okay, this is the way. So, so for me, yeah. I mean, uh, it's been halfway of the season. There's no big baddie yet. The closest would be those pirates that we had in episode one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, but and also who sent those uh, fleet of interceptors? So I'm thinking it's still Thrawn, right? So I'm thinking maybe the episode that Bryce Dallas Howard, so that's episode six, directed might be the one that links to Ahsoka. So we'll see. Is uh, it sure that they're gonna need... pilot Ahsoka? I mean, they did it with uh, Book of Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think the, most likely. I think, and the thing is, we had Ahsoka in the previous season. The previous so, season. and the thing is, they still need to explain who had the resources, which I think is still Thrawn. Because people say, "Well, it doesn't make sense. He's in the unknown region." Well, it's been 19 years since Rebels, people, and in the expanded universe, I think the Chiss is from the unexplored territories. So he probably came back. He ended up. Uh, going home and then regrouping and getting Shit. his resources. If he brings back. Uh, more of his people, Fuck. yeah, yeah, I mean, he could bring the chiss, right? And then mm -hmm. you know, I, I know I don't want them to bring the Yu Son Vong storyline yet. I mean, even if they end up going that way, I uh, want them to go that way. I want, I want another well, big not bad yet. instead of just Sith in. in oh the, yeah, it's a different the big bad, which is fine. Yeah. But uh, I think that's when they could, because I think with Ahsoka, the, the theme will be more like of the Jedi or, or more of Sith magic and all that stuff. So, yeah. So, I mean, patience. It's only halfway. I mean, I know there's four more episodes, but who knows? Maybe the last two or three episodes are an hour long. We'll it's see. Like, it's it like, see. It hasn't been listed yet, too. But so. I yeah. mean, for me, I, I don't have expectations i don't i don't have expectations of it to be like this epic grand tour just let me enjoy week to week especially with yeah. how how i am right now i'm like fuck yeah just, and favreau did enjoy. say they have no uh i mean they want to make 10 seasons of this <laughs> like oh, okay do it 
if it's that's my that's where I am like split because like or I understand that nothing is happening right now, but is that because we've been conditioned that most of these shows are one to three, one to four seasons long? That's why we need to make sure that hey, yeah. every episode counts. But if it's mm-hmm. six, eight, ten seasons long, which I think I I mean I would younger me would have would have never agreed to this, but I love the idea that they're masked. Because essentially, they're just voicing their characters for the most part. Yeah, They're probably just coming in, shoot for a few weeks, and they're fine. And most yeah. of the weeks, you have your body double in the suits. I love that because I hope that it extends, yeah. right? Extends no, the I season. I'm especially, not, I'm, I'm not bad. I'm not, not speaking for anybody else, but for me, we went from, uh, we went from growing up to get used to 22, 24 seasons. Mm-hmm. Where like uh, episodes six, six or oh, episodes or twenty where eighteen episodes are just you know nothing happened. Filler. <laughs> yes. Oh, the way from that to the pandemic uh, streaming period where we get like six to twelve episodes and everything is running so fast. Fast, yeah. So now that we get Mando, where it's like an ep- eight episode, but they're taking their time. It's not. It's like yeah. jarring again. But I, I, I'm just, I'm just enjoying it. And this. This episode, last episode, uh, and uh, I mean, the for me the, and I also like that they're not going too far with the, like the twists or the reveals because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. these four episodes are very uh, the replayability for me is very high. I can just put it on again because I like the shot, mm-hmm. the you know the the dog fights, the the mm-hmm. fight against the the creature. It's not because it's not the episode wasn't amazing because of the final reveal, you know, at the last post credit yeah. or something. So, so yeah, yeah, I'm I'm digging it. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like going back to what Chong said, that uh, they're all masks. So there's a puppet, Grogu. So that means Grogu could play Grogu forever. Yeah. Mando, I mean, if Pedro decides, you know, I, I physically I can't do it anymore. Well, you could still voice it. You can voice it. My favorite thing, just voice it, buddy. Same thing with uh, with uh, Bo-Katan. I mean, the only issue will be probably Ahsoka, but Ahsoka is makeup. So if Rosario Dawson decides to quit, we could hire somebody else and mm-hmm. Ashley could still voice it. Right? But then th- that's also the good thing. Like, it's like, uh, what, eight to ten episodes? Like, yeah, the it, it it's not going to take a lot of your life. You know? Exactly, and it's not it's not yearly so as it's, well. It's yeah. also not yearly. Exactly. So if it's yeah. eight to ten episodes, and then let's say one third or one fourth of it could be just mostly in costume. Yeah, that helps. That helps. Imagine yeah. like instead of instead of signing up for a two three month shoot, all you have to do is like a month shoot. Yeah, that opens them up. Yeah, it, it, that's it, that, that 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 became a problem with Game of Thrones. That's why the last two seasons kind of yeah. not the quality because uh kit wanted to do something else uh, uh emilia's getting busier the, uh, with the, the showrunners the, yeah. wanted to do something else and the showrunners thought that they'll do the star wars no, thing and but what's better from here also from from like the ahsoka and the mando it's like uh like if you were rosario dawson as we said it's not yearly also mm-hmm. there's no date you know you're not catch we're mm-hmm. not rushing to catch Imagine yeah. how I mean, uh, imagine like been, uh, the supernatural. Two years. You know like how many? 15, oh, yeah. 20, 15 seasons, sixteen seasons, of well, twenty-four it, episodes. Just, like just with the the Flash, I just listened you, to a and podcast. You have, to, you have to catch up to that start date of like uh, season premiere October, I think. The, the fall, yeah. Yeah. So it's and, like, and the thing is, uh, I I just listened to a podcast with uh, Danielle Panabaker. So you know she was directing, you know, and she was part of flash right the commitment like they have to move to vancouver every vancouver, time they, yeah. they have to shoot uh and so she's been like acting as killer frost or i mean just i'm forgetting that okay, miss uh, dr snow now if they didn't offer her to direct she probably would have quit earlier mm-hmm. too but you know uh but right now because it's such a low impact so that's why pedro was able to do last of us and mando and the Nicolas Cage movie, I'm guessing that probably came in at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, and worst comes to worst, keep the helmet on. He could just voice actor until he's like 
you know, uh, James Earl J Jones age and something like that. He could still, like, James Earl Jones yeah, technically I, I still play Darth Vader. I know right? that so, uh, it's also like what you said, like it makes it easy for Pedro because they don't show the max, but I like that they, they're not, they're doing that. You know, they don't need to force the yeah. face. But also, yeah. it's it. I mean, it helps that it makes sense, right? It helps yeah. that it, it, so, it, it, it's that built it, in, yeah. So it's great. I mean, yeah. And the thing is, the only one you have to worry about was Carl Weathers or Grief Karga. Well, we'll probably just. Out, out, but I mean, I am impressed with this directing, so it is better. Yeah, I agree yeah, with Jong. Like uh, the the choreography for what's his name? Keller and Beck. El yeah, Beck. I mean. If I have to nitpick, it wasn't bad, but compared to the amazing ones that we know, exactly, it's just yeah. not. It's, so I mean, it, it, yeah. Uh, I think for me, uh, maybe the stunt coordinator was not available. Uh, <laughs> they they should have hired Kei Kuo Wan uh, to choreograph that uh, that sequence, but uh, but but basically for me, I mean, going back to Ahmed Vest, I mean, he had a hard time. Uh, I'm not gonna mention what darkness he went through but basically he got his redemption he's a jedi he saved basically the disney franchise grogu right so yeah i mean uh people are now asking maybe there's a show for him if it's big enough to carry one or maybe like a mini series that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine or, too. or just um a little bit of like a, a, a what do you call it a recurring Role? Yeah, recurring character. Yeah, because be we great. still don't know. We we don't know how he survived. How and he how lost Grogu went to... from that position to yeah. somewhere in wherever he was in episode one. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, there, we'll probably get more flashbacks, and maybe Naboo ne next time will be either. I don't know that. Well, at that time, well, Padme is still alive at that time. I don't and know. I think uh, after we, I think he'll come back because I was expecting. Once they got to that spaceship, that it was the Jedi who was gonna stall the the troopers while yeah. the other guys brought Grogu away. But he he yeah. was the one that went with him. So yeah, so which makes I sense also he... because the Jedi they're trying to save as much Jedi as they could. Yeah, so something tells me yeah uh, either Naboo we'll see we'll probably see him play against himself. Uh, Jar Jar will be CGI That's and then he'll be talking cute. to. G That'll be like a Spider-Man moment, right? Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, having Jar Jar. I mean, I've seen some Jar Jar Clone Wars episodes where he played a Jedi. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> I, I actually like that episode that he pretended to be a Jedi. But yeah, so I mean, I mean, yeah, people just need to be patient. We're not having 18, 21, 22 uh, episode seasons. And I and I agree with you, Chubak, that there's not a lot of twists. Because we've been so spoiled with J.J. Abrams' uh, loss that every episode there's a twist or something well, I know, like I that. I mean, even just in Mando, like in last season, we had, you know, the Bobo Fett reveal, the... Yeah. The, yeah. Coming, right? the, the Blue gonna... Alien? The Blue Alien? Uh, uh, the Bounty Hunter? Cad Bane. Bane. Cad Bane. And then the Luke, so... Luke. Yeah, sure so... We'll have some, but I like that they didn't... They didn't need to force it every episode. Exactly. I mean, yeah, last season was we got Boba Fett, we got Bo Katan, we got Ahsoka, we got yeah, yeah. Well, we I, got, I think we I got mean, we got Dark Troopers, we got the Dark Saber, and then oh we got Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Uh, but yeah. like we we had a Mythosaur. Mythosaur. We have Bo -Katan, mm -hmm. Right? But uh, I, I do, we have I, uh, Grogu I mean, walking. <laughs> I do love that uh well but, uh, since you mentioned that I did make a comment while we were watching that, like, you're in Mandalore, uh, you're in the Mandalorian uh, group now, bitch. Nobody's gonna carry, <laughs> nobody's gonna do like the look walk. <laughs> you gotta walk on your own legs, bitch. <laughs> oh, like, with uh, uh, Grogu. When he was catching up to the armor. Yeah, yeah, calm, Grogu. yeah you're like, tot, 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 tot. Okay, yeah, that, that was cute, man. But, uh, but I yeah. Also, I also do love that uh, we got powerful women here, like uh, the armor and bow. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's just and nice. it's not forced and it's and, not forced and, and emotional dads right yeah. yes, so yeah. look at, look and at and Vizsla and Grogu uh, I mean and the thing uh, is Din. Din. Din and Pals just went jetpacking and well, Bo's like wait let me get my ship <laughs> we're smart, right? well, smart. We're, I do not like just that. a yeah. not just a not just a place to hang your helmet yeah 
So yeah. So but again, because this this is a new spot, right? This is where they kind of you know they used to be in the old town, and mm -hmm. this is a, a new place that they're training and then building a home. So they don't know the they don't know the terrain yet. So when yeah. when the when the dragon picked up your son, I'm just gonna fly. <laughs> So I just I love that it's good it's making sense. Yeah. So yeah, but it's, again, it's a good episode. It's a tight uh, what 30, 30 minute episode or shorter. Thirty or yeah, maybe. 30 yeah. Plus. So it's not not a lot of fat to trim. I mean, people said like the previous episode could have been like a forty five minutes or something, but you know I don't complain. I just like I just enjoy we have Star Wars. I mean, you know, I grew up in the eighties and nineties where we barely had Star Wars. And until the special editions came out and then the Phantom Menace. So yeah. Yeah, it's a great episode. Are, right. are we rating? Let us rate. Let me pull up our sheet so I can log <coughs> what we grade Mandalorian episode four. Let's start with you, Chibox. I'll go with what I scored. Eight. with a high seven huh. like i i mean it's seven so uh -huh. good you know uh -huh. good show. it's a good rating really enjoyed it maybe uh, high seven low eight but we'll go with the seven i'm i'm going a, a low seven right still a seven still good the reason again action I was really, I, it was the thing where I was like so torn because I love the action. I love, I love that we finally see how Grogu was rescued. I want to mm -hmm. figure out how, well, of course, they experimented on him. So maybe that's the reason why he forgot about everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like all the crappy choreography. Um, and <laughs> I do, I did love the, the Mandalorian action scenes. Yeah. Uh, it's just like there were a few frames that you'd see the weird flying. Right, but most of the flying was great. I love, I love, I like just love seeing Mandalorians flying in jetpack. It's so cool. Yeah. And like as a group, it's great. Yeah, Arnie? Uh I would go with an eight. Um, for reasons I already mentioned, and I, I, I can't wait for the behind the scenes and for them to reveal that. Yeah, we actually hired cosplayers for those Mandalorians, and uh, right? just like in <laughs> just like in season one, they hired stormtrooper cos cosplayers because it, you know, because some would say, well. It could be very, very dorky, or it could be very, very cool. I think it's a good mix of both because there's some clunky training that oh, you're 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 parrying flamethrowers with a flamethrower. Okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but that's I Star mean, Wars. It's it, clunky. It made me think also, but I think there might be a point like the liquid is is gonna be hitting yeah. each other. So yeah, or. Did you run a risk of burning each other? You said that we should shut it. it goes back and to then, yourself, but and then they're just shooting at the water. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're target practicing, you should have a target, not just a random. That is true. That is true. A random. Link. I thought that they were they, they had something, but they didn't. Yeah, but again, that's Star Wars for me. I mean, you know, the stormtrooper hitting his head on the door. Okay, it's clunky, but you know, uh, but it's but again. So I mean, for me, it's like, hey, it's Cobra Kai <laughs> training session. Uh, and it's basically the purpose of that scene is for Grogu to start his training. That's basically, it, it served a purpose. It, it would have been more clunky if they just showed them training and then nothing happened, right? So, yeah, it's, a, it's an hey guys. Uh, so happy for Ahmed Bast. He's, uh, he's redeemed. He's a, he's a master Jedi. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see more of him. And maybe we'll get more either in uh, a mini series or animation that he, he that he survived and where he where is he now? I hope he didn't die eventually. So yeah, there you go. Oh, so we're all rated. <clears throat> yep. That is it for our particular episode. Um, stay tuned for the next episode of The Mandalorian and a, a batch of Ted Lasso episodes for us to react to. It's been, I've been week on week. It's my happy place. So I'm excited to discuss it with my bros. But with that, uh, thank you very much. And we hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.